So today we are going to be making a recipe out of one of my favorite cookbooks. We are going to be making Southwestern vegetable soup. This has become a family favorite. Uh, first year trying it actually this year and I love it. It's a pressure canning recipe so you do need to have a pressure canner to achieve making this and preserving it. The one thing that I really love about this soup is it's a great way to use up all that stuff that's coming out of the garden right now. We're October 30th so it's pretty much the end of garden season and what we're left with is a whole bunch of green tomatoes and I'm going to tell you in a moment how we're going to use those. So I'm not going to bore you with chopping up everything. I'm just going to get everything all ready and into its appropriate bowls. Then we're going to come back and go through measurements and things like that on this video and this recipe. One thing I did want to touch on was that this recipe actually calls for tomatillos. Now I didn't grow tomatillos. I've never grown them before, but we might actually look into it now that we found out about this recipe and loving it so much. But that led to my looking for a substitution. And after some research, and now having made this recipe four times already this year for storage, I have discovered green tomatoes chopped up and soaked in lime juice for two hours basically give you tomatillos or something very similar. Now, I can't attest to the taste because I've never actually tried tomatillos, so uh, this is just going on what people say, but boy, it really works well in the soup, so it's worked for us so far. And the other fantastic thing about this is it uses up that stuff that's kind of coming in out of the garden late, like I was saying, and it's not quite ripe. And I always have this sort of, I guess, uh, trouble coming up with the inventive ways to use up the green tomatoes. So this is great. All right, so finally everything is cut up. We had a slight delay because we had to do chores and now it's dark out, but we're gonna get going on this soup. So for a single batch of this Southwestern soup, you're going to need one and a half quarts of corn, one quart of chopped tomatoes, two cups of tomatillos, which we used our green tomatoes, and three quarters of a cup of our uh, banana peppers, one cup of chopped carrots, one cup chopped red pepper, one cup chopped onions, one cup of chopped green peppers, and a quarter cup of jalapenos. And yes, if you're thinking it looks like a lot more than that in the bowls, it is. I actually doubled this recipe because the recipe only makes four quart jars and I want to fill my pressure canner with seven jars so we are doubling it and going to have a little bit for dinner afterwards but I'm now going to go through the spices and a few little bonus stuff that we put in so for spices in this you're going to need two teaspoons of chili powder one teaspoon cayenne pepper one teaspoon black pepper one teaspoon salt and three tablespoons of chopped up cilantro Right now, other than the liquid portion of this recipe, you have all the ingredients that are in the book. But I like to add a few things to just make this a little bit more of a hearty soup. Black beans. Now these have been soaked overnight or 24 hours, probably almost getting to more than that now. Uh, so these are ready to go right in for our soup. I use one and a half cups when I do a double batch. So you can work that out yourself. <laughs> and the other thing that I'm throwing in there this year is the celery because we have a lot of celery growing in the garden and so I'm doing one cup of really nicely fine chopped up celery. You could add more if you wanted but that's what works for us. And last but not least as I mentioned is our liquid. I am using home canned plain tomato juice. You can use store-bought. Basically you want one and a half quarts per batch. I've got three here. We may not use that all but watch this space and see how we do when we get to that point. So as we're getting all the ingredients into this pot and it's getting quite full, one thing that I wanted to uh, mention was in my half cup here, because I'm doing a double batch, otherwise it would only be a quarter cup of jalapenos, I also have some, you can see the red, those are actually Aurora hot peppers. They're quite a bit hotter than jalapenos. So one thing I'm omitting from this recipe is the hot sauce. It does call for four teaspoons of hot sauce I'm not putting that in. We're gonna taste test it before we jar it up and if I think we need to add it, we'll add it then. But just letting you know for your use in the recipe that it does actually have hot sauce as well. 
So now we're at that stage where really our soup is far too thick to even stir, but it is going to cook down. And that's one thing to remember. This needs to simmer for 15 minutes and those tomatoes and things are going to become more liquid. That is why I suggest when you're putting in your tomato juice, instead of bunging all the three liters or liter and a half, quart and a half uh, in all at once, do it in increments. Do half, then another half, so that you can make sure you're not getting too runny of a soup, unless that's what you're looking for, of course. But one thing that we have to remember is I kind of adapted this recipe by putting in those beans. And those beans aren't fully cooked or expanded yet. So we're going to have to make sure we allow a little bit of extra liquid for those to absorb up. I think we're going to have a very full pot. All right, so that is everything in this pot. I'm just stirring in the spices now. We're basically going to bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for 15 minutes. And then in our jars it goes to be pressure canned. This will need to be canned if you're doing quart jars, 10 pounds pressure for an hour and a half or 90 minutes. We are ready to jar up this soup. In the end, I used two and a half quarts of the tomato juice. I didn't go the full three, one because my pot was full and also because I do feel there was enough liquid now in this. So let's get jarring it up. Our seven jars are all finished and ready to go in the canner and we still have quite a bit left. I was anticipating putting this into a jar but it is more than an eighth jar actually so we're just going to leave it in here and cook it up for lunch tomorrow. Aren't they pretty? I absolutely love this soup. Now just remember when you're canning it you want to leave one inch head space, finger tight on your jar lids and hour and a half in the pressure canner at 10 pounds pressure.